Now, think about the words geography, isolation, colonialism and displacement. It's impossible perhaps to imagine how they could be bound together in a way that is meaningful. Yet the Russian-Tunisian-born artist Nadia Kabilinka has managed to fuse them all together. They're just some of the themes that govern a breadth of work that by turn is daring, intellectually challenging and emotionally stimulating. Well, Nadia now joins me in the studio to talk about an exhibition that's being held in London at the moment, in fact, at the Mosaic Rooms. Two exhibitions, effectively, under one roof, Future Rewound and The Cabinet of Souls. They're very enigmatic titles. Where do they stem from? Uh, the starting point of the exhibition was the building itself, uh, which is called the Tower House, hosting the Mosaic Rooms. When I was invited to make the show approximately a year ago, uh, I thought it would be interesting to dig on the history of the building and we discovered that uh, Emery Kiralfi was living there in the late 19th century. And Emery Kiralfi was the general director of the Great Britain exhibitions. Uh, so I was really attracted by the history of these mm. uh, Great Britain exhibitions because they're also somehow the beginning of what we know today as art fair, as universal exhibitions, what today became the biennials, triennials, sure. etc. The shows in itself. So that was like the premise is the beginning of that. And um, while digging in the history of uh, Emery Kiranfi himself and the building, we got close to the history of the colonial history of yeah. Great Britain somehow. Because one of his uh, shows that he made uh, was called The Savage South Africa. It was in, 19, in 1899, in uh, the Great Britain exhibition 1899, and they have invited 174 Zulus from South Africa. So that was actually quite a groundbreaking thing in itself. But I mean, the thing which is so fascinating, we can actually see one of the photographs there, yeah. in fact, of a Zulu warrior, but it's how you take history and give it a very 21st century feel, that you don't lose the sense of being drawn into the past whilst you're still in the present. Now, how on earth do you do that? Well, f because for me, from my point of view, there is no present or future without the past. It's completely all linked together. So to come back to the uh, example of the Zulus, the way they were presented, it was completely wrong to what they really were. They were not grabbed. They were people who were just working. It was like a kind of performance. They were paid to come here. But the presentation was, it was a kind of propaganda. It was meant to show mm. them like sa savage. Yes. but they were just mind workers and the strength of them and the strength of empire as well and also the strength of the media because the how the image is put in which angle how they are dressed it's all a kind of you draw the view of the spectator to see something particular mm. and not see something else sure. and with the research of the archive we realized that these people were actually very uh, educated they spoke more than two or three languages and probably more educated They're, than some of the people who were staging the exhibitions exactly so what this work was about is to give back Back somehow the personality that was taken away to give them a face. I mean, it, it's, it's a very ambitious goal, but when because the, the exhibition has been going strong effectively since October, but when you actually gauge the feedback of people who look at your work, do they get that what you're trying to do that you're you're taking back the past and, and, and basically reclaiming, if you like, the past of these these men and women in these photographs? Uh, every time, of course, it's very different how people experience uh, every work differently. But what's certainly striking is that they get close to portraits and they ask themselves for sure who are these people. And you can see that the picture is quite ancient. It looks like it's mm. old because it's taken from old pictures. So there is a kind of incongruence. How come these images, we see them in this way, sure. like a classical portrait gallery in a contemporary art space today. And this question can already take the spectator further to ask a question, what, what are these archives? Mm. How come we're showing them in this space? And, uh, and so on. Because the interesting thing about your works, I looked at it on, on the website, is that it's also the vastness of it as well, installations. Yeah, I now, work mostly with installations. Absolutely, so. which is, which I, I'm, I'm not an artist, but I would imagine that it's very difficult constructing installations because you don't necessarily use one solid material. You can use mm -hmm. something. It could be wood, it could be paper, it could also be light, something which you can't hold. But so what makes it such a challenge for you to, to go for that particular conduit, if you like, to express your feelings, to express what you want to share with the world? Well, actually, what I mostly, what, uh, what drags me is um, 
Sometimes it's an emotion, sometimes it's a situation, most of the time it's a question. And the technique or the media that I use, it's not something that I decide before. It's always linked to the idea. So the concept and the media, they make a body, they work together. And that's why every time I use a completely different technique. That, I, For example, I never worked with photography or archive, for the example of faces that we mm. talked about. Another work was with the profile, metal profiles, the outlines of the uh, unit cells in different countries sure. of the world. And in that case, I had to work like an uh, architect because I use the language of the architecture. So every time I use a different media, depending on the concept and what do I want to express with that. I word. mean, it's interesting you've used that word architecture as well, because I know that, again, just reading about your work, people talk about the link with Le Corbusier. Yeah, that's what, Le Modular. It's yeah, modular, modular, the modular, yeah. exactly. I mean, uh, do, you, do you see yourself as an architect, not in the conventional sense that you're constructing buildings that people will either live in or they will use to display things, but um, an alternative to that, a visual architect. Um, architecture is a basic inspiration element because my work is very much linked to the urban space. So I work with existing elements. I work, for example, with surfaces that are in the walls. I work with the interior spaces or exterior. In that sense, I'm very linked to architecture. But what I do is much more intimate. Well, I, I work about the invisible, invisibility. So it's the invisibility. And the architecture is more <laughs> the opposite. It's more about expressing, giving space. Because, because it's interesting, that given the importance of architecture and your interpretation of it, I, I mm. wondered as well whether, whether you are a frustrated architect at heart. or at Not at all. Not no, at all. No, <laughs> Or we could say a dancer. I wanted to be a dancer. You wanted so to be a dancer. <laughs> but I suppose that in some ways your art, your art does dance. It, it, it yeah. dances with various concepts, themes, and it beguiles you because you, it, it's not immediately visible, but you, you go with it. I work a lot with that, what's not visible directly, but what is present around us, everyday life, things that we think evident. But if we switch it around or look at it from a different angle, you can open a very vast question. And, and that itself is quite interesting as well, to actually find beauty, to find something something deep in an object that could be mundane, as mundane yeah. as a pen. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's a lot about my work, the things that uh, seem evident and it's actually nothing is evident. <laughs> but, but then what, what led you to this? Because I've, sp I've spoken to quite a few artists and they've said, oh, well, you know, we, we like working with cameos, we like working with paint, we like larger than life canvases, etc. You're very different, very abstract but not quite abstract there's something actually I'm very very realistic but because I'm so realistic it becomes abstract because I work with prints and my uh, all of my pieces most of them I would even say all of them are re linked to reality linked in a way that there is a kind of touching I touch the surface and when you really I notice that when you're really close to the surface you become abstract not abstract in itself in the visual the result becomes abstract if we say let's say a microscope view of uh, cells, it looks abstract, but what's more concrete than getting into the subject itself? Mm. And when I do a print, I'm very close to the reality, but the result is actually, so there's always this link between realism and abstraction. Now, as I said at the, the beginning of our conversation, time sadly runs very, very tight. I could talk, for you, talk to you forever, but I can't, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, the, the exhibition is ongoing, but there are a few days left to run, is that correct? Yeah, until the 29th. The finissage is on the 29th. Excellent, but we're going to be tracking your career, and hopefully you'll come back and discuss some of your future work with I us. would love to. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. That is Nadia Kabilinke. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you very and much. And good luck. Thank you.